Hello, I am Wanderer001 and this is my review of the D-Link DCS942L. This is a Wi-Fi connected camera for monitoring your home inside or out uh, with the preface of the camera is built to stay inside but you can point it outside and still you know get the picture really this has a lot of uh, functionality and i've been thinking about getting uh, something like this for a long time uh, i originally thought i would get a nest or drop cam but the big concern for me was if i had no internet connection then i would not be able to either one see my feed of the camera or two with the nest and slash drop cam it stores all of that video on somebody else's server I wasn't really comfortable with that and having to pay an extra subscription fee just to access my video, I wasn't really uh, down for. So with the D-Link here, there's a lot of features that are similar to the Nest or Drop Cam, but one major one that made it the reason I ended up getting it. Well, there's two reasons I ended up getting it. I finally ended up getting a surveillance camera because at my condo complex, we had a lot of car fires over the summer. People were lighting cars on fire. So I got a camera to monitor what was going on outside. So we're gonna start off with just, you know, giving you the general specifications, you know, dimensions, things like that. I'll take you around, show you what's what. Uh, so to start off, you are looking at the camera, which is currently hanging out on the included stand. Uh, the camera has a height of 3.78 with a width of 2.3 and a depth of 1.37. Now it weighs the camera, again, not without the stand, a total of 2.75 ounces or with the stand 3.9 ounces. So again, it is ridiculously light. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is because I like comparing things with actual everyday items. So I'm gonna show you the camera lens in reference to an American quarter American half dollar and an American silver dollar. Just to give you an idea of the lens area here and also next to a pack of playing cards. So you're, you're looking about a playing card size uh, surveillance camera. Looking at the front here, you'll notice there's a bunch of dots. These dots are infrared IR lights. So what this is gonna allow you to do is use this camera at night to view what's going on. Now. The IR lights only have a 15 feet uh, throw. And if you try and use this through a window like I do, these are gonna cause you a little bit of uh, trouble, but I'll get into uh, some workarounds for that later. So if you're wondering how I got around the IR lights reflecting off of my window, well, this is what I ended up having to do. Uh, pretty much all it is is electrical tape all around where the IR lights are. I did have to even bring it over to the side a little bit because I was still getting some bleed through. Uh, you will notice that up there, I do have a little bit of the light sensor covered because I was getting a lot of bleed on this particular side. Uh, even with partial light sensor coverage, I'm still good with uh, changing from day to night mode automatically. You will also notice that I have a cotton ball and electrical tape going across the uh, motion sensor because believe it or not there is a certain amount of light that does come out of the motion sensor which also reflects against the window uh, i have tried other uh, types of covering the ir lights and found electrical tape to work the best mainly because while the unit does not get extraordinarily hot it does get a little warm and you want to make sure that you're using something that can handle a little bit of heat and electrical tape is going to be the way that you want to go with that so it's not pretty, but uh, that is how I got around not being able to turn off the IR lights manually. I had to do a lot of uh, covering up. I did forget to mention that uh, when I covered everything with electrical tape right here, you will notice that the microphone area was covered. So you are going to lose a little bit of audio functionality if that's what you're looking for. In my case, I don't really care about the audio because I just want the video pointing outside, but if you don't cover even down here, you still will get bleed through of the IR light. So just keep that in mind. You may need to cover up your microphone as well. Up at the top here, you have a light sensor. So that's how it switches between automatically going to day and night mode. You can also manually switch between day and night mode, but you cannot turn off the IR lights once it's in night mode because 
This is a cheaper uh, wireless camera, so you're not gonna get the full features that you would if you paid a little more. Down here you have a microphone so that you can hear what's going on on the other side of the camera. And here you have a motion sensor, PIR sensor, which allows you to set the camera to trigger certain events based on motion coming around the back here. We're gonna futz the stand a little bit. You've got an ethernet port, so if you wanted to, you could hardline this into the modem itself, or you can use it over Wi-Fi, and that's generally how you're probably gonna be using this. I use it over Wi-Fi. Here you have your cable input, uh, five volt for powering the device. It does come included with a power supply, or power cable, and it's a very generously sized cable. It's almost 10 feet in length, so you can kind of snake that around where you need to go. Here is an input for audio out. So you can have two-way communications with this. However, the, uh, the issue is it's not built into the camera itself. You will have to set up a secondary peripheral if you want to have that option. Coming down here, we have different uh, lights. So we'll start down here. This is to turn on the uh, WPS, and this is the light for the WPS. So once you initiate it, that light will go blue. And then if you know how to, you can pair it easily through your Wi-Fi by pressing the Wi-Fi's WPS button. You can also manually configure it if you wanted to. Here there is a tiny reset button which you can't get to without a uh, push pin. Here is the light that indicates what's going on. So there's three things that you're gonna notice with this light. One, if it's red, like this, it means that the device is powered on, but it does not have connection to Wi-Fi. If the light is green, it means it's powered on and connected, and connected to Wi-Fi and everything is functioning perfectly fine. Last is green but blinking means that the camera is being accessed via the app in order to view what's going on through the live feed. Coming down to the stand here, you will notice that you have a pivoting ball joint, which will allow you to manipulate and angle this however you may need. This is not the greatest part of the camera, but it's functional and I'm okay with that. Underneath here, you're gonna notice you have some rubberized pads which help keep it from moving. You'll also notice that here there is some green stuff. That is because I use sticky tack in order to hang this up uh, by my window because I didn't want to have to drill holes to keep this in place. Now you could, if you come here and here and press these tabs, flip up this little portion here, which will allow you to drill four holes in order to keep this hanging up somewhere. In my case, I didn't want to do that, which is why I ended up, ended up using the sticky tack. So I mentioned one of the reasons that I got this over uh, the drop cam is right here. And this is a micro SD card, which allows you to store your own files locally. So yes, it's not good if you have this out where people can get to it and tamper with it, but if you're worried about somebody else storing your files, this is an excellent way to do it. Can take anywhere up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, which will allow you to have 12 days of continuous uh, 24 seven recording. Aside from having the local storage, you also can get you know messaged alerts either via the motion sensor or via a audible sensor. So what it will do is it will send you a message to your attached email that's uh, you know with the D-Link account that you create saying, hey, this action happened. And depending on how you have it set up, it will either send you a video clip or send you a you know still image of what just happened. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you what the user interface to this is. There is a web user interface that allows you to set this thing up. Now, D-Link kind of says this is pretty much just a plug and play device. I'm not gonna say it's exactly a plug and play device. It needed a little, of, a little bit of formatting before I actually got it up and running probably took me 45 minutes of just getting updates firmware set up and then 15 minutes of configuring the uh, user interface through the web UI in order to get this exactly where I wanted. So again, an hour is not a terrible length of time in setting something like this up, 
but it's not exactly plug and play. So here, here's what you're going to be looking at with the user interface for the web UI. So when you first log into the web UI for the camera, this is where you're brought. It is a live video feed of your camera. Now, this is one of the major things that I do not like about the D-Link, and it, that's the, the drivers that they're using are old. They're outdated. Um, when I first installed them on the computer, uh, I tried them both in Firefox, Chrome, and even in Internet Explorer, and they all had the same issue. Uh, Firefox and Chrome told me that the drivers were outdated and would no longer be supported after uh, you know set amount of versions of the browser. Well, as you can see, I have had several updates to my browser, and the drivers are no longer uh, compatible, so nothing will display here. So you got a 50-50 chance of not being able to see stuff through the web browser. Doesn't mean that the app won't still work, uh, or there's a setup window, which I'll show you in a moment, which actually takes a live feed rather than processing it through that. But if you are lucky enough to have this working, you have these options at the bottom, which will allow you to change through several different preset, as you see, profiles. Uh, you can expand it, take screenshot, video capture, file folders, mute it, talk, and then the zoom functions. What you're generally going to be spending most of your time on is this setup right here. In setup, you are presented with just that, the options for setting up your particular camera. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, and I'm not going to read through these side panel because you can do that at your leisure or if you actually purchase this product. So it's just going to help you set up the camera. Networking is just that. It's going to give you all of your networking options, just like wireless setup. You can set, you know, your network name, uh, plug in the key which is you know the password for it and here it just scanned and it will show you all the SSIDs listed in my location I'm not going to do that dynamic DNS this is more of an advanced feature if you had your own domain you can set it up uh, using this area here you're gonna probably spend most of your time on this image setup audio and, and we're gonna go down the list here this is a live feed from my camera currently as it's situated pointing outside. You will notice that you can kind of see a reflection of it even though I did tape over all the IR lights. Uh, that's partially because my parking lot has all these lights here, here, there's one off to the side here and another one over in this corner. And that kind of gives a little reflection and makes it a little visible if you have a window where you're trying to paint through. Uh, there's probably about three to four inches of space between my window and the actual camera itself. But you're going to come down here to these brightness and contrast settings. Now, when I first set up the camera, I did not have this clear of a picture when I first set it up into night mode. I had to play with my brightness and contrast. I had to tell if the light source was outside, leave the auto white balance, and so forth. Uh, the big thing that I had to change and that's the only reason it's coming in this clearly, is I had to change the shutter speed. It was on disabled, which means there is no shutter speed. I lowered the shutter speed so that it lets in more light. Now, it does lag the image a little bit, like you do see a little ghosting if something happens, which nothing's happening at the moment, sadly. Uh, and during the daytime, the color saturation is not as nice as it would be, but I mainly got this for nighttime viewing as opposed to daytime viewing. So that's where you're going to have to play with the shutter speed if um, you don't get a clear night image. Coming over to audio and video, again, setting up, this is going to show you how you have your video profile. So remember those profiles that were on the first page? This is where you come to set them up. You can tell it the encoding type, resolution, frames, all that fun stuff. If you need to slow down the video bitrate because maybe you don't have a good uh, Wi-Fi connection, this is where you would do it. You can drop it down quite low. Just keep in mind that your video is not going to be great quality if it's, you know, a smaller file size. And again, here you have your speaker and microphone set up. You can have them at two different audio levels. Moving over to time and date. Again, it's just that time and date setups. Video clip. By default, this is not turned on. So if we put a check mark here, we can set up parameters for video clips. Now, a video clip is different than the video recording that you're currently doing. A clip, if a trigger is activated, either motion, schedule, always, or sound, it will send you a recording of your choosing, you know, size, duration, here you have max duration, uh, and pre-roll, 
to either FTP server or an email that you specify. And again, if you come down here, it will give you extra options that you need to go through in order to set that up. Same thing with snapshot. Snapshot, instead of taking a video clip, it will take just a quick snapshot, just like you would with a camera. And again, you have the same triggers, the motion, the schedule, the sound. IP filtering, I'm going to skip because that's more of an advanced feature, as well as the HTTPS setup. Uh, you probably don't need to play with those. If you do know what they are and do want to play with them, there's the options for that. We're going to come now to the SD recording. So that's the recording, uh, the SD card inside. And right now I have it always recording to the SD card uh, because, well, I want to have a backup of what's going on. You can set it again for a motion, schedule, or a sound. So if you just wanted this to record at night, you can say schedule and then it will give you a schedule by which you can schedule it going off. In my case, I always want it, and I always want it recording video, not a snapshot. And again, here you can change the recording length. Currently, the default is one. You can have it go all the way up to six minutes if you want. And again, free space on the SD card and cycle. So when I reach the end of the space available on my SD card, it just writes over the uh, the first thing that it recorded. Coming over to motion detection. This, this is a part of the problem with that driver issue. There should be a video here, but there is not because there's two different type of motion sensing. There is a motion sensor on the front of the camera, which if something passes, walks into frame, it will trigger an event if you have it set to do so. There's also a motion sensor where you can set up a grid on the image itself. So if something walks through the frame over here, but you don't have that grid at all, it won't set the trigger mechanism. But if you have this side gridded and something walks through, it would trigger it. I can't show you that because, again, the drivers are really bad and they don't function as they should. Same thing with the sound. So your detection level is almost like a, a decibel level. If you don't have this high enough, it takes quite a bit of noise for the detection to actually go off. Uh, I had, this is the default, I didn't change it, uh, 70. And really I had to kind of get right up on the, the camera and like clap my hands really loud to, to have it trigger a sound detection event. Last bit is the SD management. Here you're going to see the file structure for your SD card. It's broken down into days, obviously. So here you've got 2015, October 17th. So we're going to click into that. And then it's got your file numbers. Here you can see page one of five. Uh, so we'll come up to the 21st one here. And here we have 2015, October 17th. And then this is a military time. So this is 21... 59 and 0 seconds. So if we clicked on that, we're given options of either saving the file or opening it with a particular player. It's up to you. So if you wanted to download and give the file to somebody, maybe law enforcement, if that's what you have it for, uh, this is where you would come to do that. If not, you can play things from this location. And here you can see the total usage of your SD card. Currently I have a 32 gigabyte SD card in there. And that's the space. Last but not least is the log out button right here and that will obviously log you out of the D-Link setup. So we're gonna move over to maintenance and just like it says it's maintenance for the camera. You can change your password, you can add user accounts so again over here you can read what a adding a user will do it will just let them pretty much view the feed that you have set up and you can man manage your user list you can check your authentication. You can change the device name and power the LED. So there's an LED on the back of it, which I showed you before. And you can either have it always on, always off, or flickering. I'm going to skip status because there's a lot of sensitive information on there. But pretty much it shows you what's going on with your camera. It also has event logs and things like that, which you can look through. But this is where you're going to go check it out. Uh, again, back to the maintenance for one second. You have your system, which again has your system information. Firmware upgrade, so if you need to upgrade your firmware, this is where you would do it. 
and then that logout is always going to be there. So y you see that there are some problems with the web user interface, but it's not terrible. So here's the other way that you can view videos through the web UI. You're going to use uh, the My D-Link app that you can download for your smartphone. In my case, I have it on my Android phone. So I'm going to show you what that looks like and what you can do with that. Options that you have from the My D-Link Lite app are, are pretty standard. So what you will need to do is create a My D-Link account and log in using the app. And what that'll give you is once you log in, you'll see on the main screen here, any cameras that you actually currently have. In my case, I've got my lot cam. It's showing that it's via the cloud or this remote access as opposed to local. Now, if I tap over to local, I'm not gonna see any change because I'm currently residing where this camera is. So I'll just swap back to remote. Uh, you can add a new camera from here, but what you're interested in is this. Tapping on the cam will open up what the camera is currently seeing. Obviously right now you're seeing my camera as it loads up the feed from my lock cam. At the bottom here, you'll see several options that you can do. You can adjust the volume, take a picture. Currently it is showing that it is in, it's in 480 as opposed to the 240p. Also you have options to turn on and off the mic, auto night or day mode, and then information. If you pop information up, here in the screen, it'll give you all sorts of tidbits as to what's happening with the feed from the cam. Now, it is in portrait mode at the moment, but if you double tap, it will turn it into landscape mode. You don't just have to double tap on the screen in order to change the orientation. It can also be changed just by flipping your phone. So if we come up here to the three dots, you get extra extra settings. In fact, some of them are settings, which will allow you to change some of the aspects of the camera's features from the app itself. Not a lot, but it does a few. You also have access to playback settings, but because of the app and the latest download, I cannot access the playback settings, which would let me see all the recorded information on the uh, SD card, as well as manipulate some of the settings here. But that's the app itself, not really the camera's fault. Coming back to the feed itself, if we go back, again, we have three bars, which if we, if we tap on them will allow us to see extra options and settings that the mobile app can do. But for the most part, you're going to utilize the app just so you can get a live feed of what's going on wherever you have the camera set up. From the app, you can also zoom. So pinch to zoom, just like you would on a smartphone. It is digital zoom, so don't let the uh, idea that you're zooming in fool you. It is not an optical zoom, so you will get pixelation as you zoom in. And for me, I'm zooming in to see that the person who parked next to me parked really, really close to the line, and I'm kind of glad that I parked really close to the grass. Uh, is... All right, so you, you, you saw what it looks like through the app, but maybe you want to know what those files look like if you actually download them. So I'm gonna roll in some daytime footage and some nighttime footage to show you what it will look like with a downloaded file. So I feel this one needs a little more explanation because I didn't walk out into the lot myself uh, to do movement. But if you look to the upper right hand corner of the screen, you should actually be seeing somebody walking down the sidewalk who will be walking into the building going right across from me. You should be able to see it now. They're walking into the light 
just to give you an idea of what it looks like with a little motion uh, you can see what it looks like how dark the cars are and you know it, it's not the greatest for night vision if you're not using the IR lights but this is an example of what it would look like with the night filter on but not having any of the IR lights on. So keeping in mind that this is only a standard def uh, 640 by 480 cam camera, uh, D-Link does make a high def one if you need high definition video. Uh, if you're just gonna be really using this for surveillance, or even if you're gonna use this as like a makeshift baby monitor, you don't really need high def. So you can save yourself a little money by getting the cheaper, uh, you know, standard def 640 by 480 resolution uh, camera. If you're gonna go that route and, and get this one, you're looking to spend anywhere between $150 to $70, uh, depending on where the sale is that you pick it up. Really, I, I, I wanted something like this for a long time and I was hesi hesitant to get it because I couldn't justify one leaving it on all the time uh, because I was worried about power consumption from a device like this. But really, what I found is during the day when the IR lights aren't on, it uses anywhere between 2.9 to 3 watts of power, which is almost negligible. At nighttime when the IR lights are on, it uses between 3.9 to 4. So again, fairly negligible. The, the, for what this is doing, it's using very little power. And that includes if the Wi-Fi is on and it's writing to the SD card here. That's the total amount of power that it's going to use. So really, I can't see why you wouldn't. If you find this on sale, even if you're remotely considering something like this, I would get this guy here, try it out, see how you like it. And then if you wanna get something more expensive, if you wanna get the HD one, then you could. But, but try the D-Link out. It has been a very serviceable uh, Wi-Fi connected camera and I'm, I'm happy I got it. Uh, thankfully, I haven't had to use it to uh, monitor cars getting lit on fire because that kind of stopped shortly after I got this, of course, but I'm okay with that because I wanted it just in case. So for my purposes, I like it. it. It was cheap enough that I don't feel bad having purchased it, uh, even though I haven't had to use it for, you know, handing over information to law enforcement or whatever. Um, if you're considering something like this, I would suggest this guy start off with a cheap one. There's really no reason not to try getting the D-Link here. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. I will try and answer them to the best of my abilities. I have been Wanderer001, and thanks for watching.